So the strategy in this extra lesson that we're doing, all we're trying to figure out here is how to get the Y alone. As we talked about a little bit earlier, your calculator is an awesome technology tool. However, whenever you're trying to do something with it that involves an equation, you need to have the Y by itself to input that into your calculator with the Y equals. So all we're going to do right now is we're going to get the Y thing alone. Bree? Are we skipping this, the other four points here? Yeah, I guess yeah. In the first example, as we get things alone, we're always trying to get that y equals. That's the whole strategy in this lesson. So our big goal is y equals something. That's the strategy. Everything in this lesson is about let's get y by itself. <clears throat> so in the first one, when we are trying to undo things, we do things in the opposite order. So like PEM does, the do the parentheses, exponent, multiply, divide, add, subtract. It's called the order of operations. And that's when you're trying to solve for something. But when you're trying to undo something, you do it in reverse order kind of thing. Or something to that effect. So in example number one, what I notice is the y is not alone. And there's division and there's subtraction. So I'm going to get rid of this fraction first. The way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. The reason I'm multiplying both sides by 3 is because the 3 multiplication and the 3 division undo each other. So now when I rewrite this equation, what I would see is y minus 2 equals, and you always put the numbers in front of the parentheses, so x minus 1, said 1, row 2, weird, squared, and that's the undoing of the 3. And then next, just to get the y alone, I need to add 2 to both sides. Now, you can always write down all these steps, but I kind of know that many of you will probably be able to do some of these in your head. If you can, that's great. And this one, I'm actually going to write it. So I'm going to add 2 to both sides. When I add 2, my final answer, or the one that I can put in my calculator to y1, would be y equals 3 parentheses x minus 1 squared plus 2. And so, as you can see, the goal is to get the y alone, everything else on the other side of the equation. Let's try another one. Oh, no. The whole y thing and everything with it is being squared. So we square root both sides. The thing you have to be really careful about is if you look on the right-hand side, you'll notice that you square rooted a variable. And because when you square root a variable, you're not sure what in, went in there, you need to go with a plus or minus. So really what's happening is I now have y plus 1 all over 2 equals plus or minus the square root of whatever I saw over there, which was the x minus 2 all over 3. Meaning that it could come out to be the positive square root or the negative. Because you want to do that a square, so like when you square a negative, it turns out to be a non-negative. So like negative 4 squared is positive 16. So that's why we have to put the plus or minus there, because either one could work, the positive or the negative. Not done, though. Just like in the previous problem, there's a division, so I have to undo the division. So to undo divided by 2, I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. So now I multiply the left side by 2. And I multiply the right side by 2. When you do that, the 2's on the left-hand side will reduce out. So that's kind of what our main goal was. These reduce 2 and 2. 2 over 2 is 1. That's why we did it. And then what ends up happening is I get a y, bless you, plus 1, equals... And I like to put the 2 directly in front of the uh, square root symbol because it's less confusing to me. So I write it as plus or minus... 2 times the square root of whatever we saw before, which was the x minus 2 all over 3. Oh, darn it. There's still the 1 there. So how am I going to get rid of that 1? Minus, minus 1 from both sides. So instead of writing down minus 1, what I know is that when I move something from one side of the equation to the other, it just changes sign. So this ends up being... When you're done, y equals, move the positive one to the other side, it becomes negative 1, plus or minus 2 times the square root of whatever we saw before, 
which was that x minus 2 all over 3. And the kind of the tough thing that you might not realize in this particular problem is you actually have two equations. No worries. Door is open. Tell Bree to get out. Do it again. Tell Bree to get out. Okay, our next problem, again with the division or multiplication of a number. So I notice that there is a 3 being divided um, on the left-hand side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. So I multiply the left by 3. I multiply the right by 3. And from our earlier talks, you might recall that whether the number is on the inside or the outside of the absolute value when you multiply or divide doesn't matter. So kind of the cool thing in this problem is that these threes reduce out, but so do these threes. So you're left with, after you're done with that, that you have y minus 2 is the Sorry. absolute Sorry. And then we have the absolute value of x plus 1 on the right-hand side. And then the only thing left over, of course, at this point, is that we have the 2 there. To get rid of the 2, we're going to add 2 to both sides. Um, rather than writing out the steps every single time, I'm going to just move it over. And so I have y equals the absolute value of x plus 1. And then I've added 2 to the other side. That plus 2 can come in the front of the absolute value or it can come at the end of the absolute value. It doesn't matter. We have one that was similar to one that we did before. It's another y squared. To undo a square, we're going to square root something. So I look at this one and I go, okay, I'm going to take the square root of the left side, square root of the right side. Oh, I square root an x thing, so I have to... Plus or minus. Plus or minus, very good. So plus or minus means I'm going to have y plus 1. The plus or minus goes on the opposite side. So that's equal to plus or minus the square root of whatever was over there, which was an x minus 6. And then all that's left is to move the 1 to the right-hand side. And if you want to write down minus 1 from both sides, you can. But what ends up happening is I move that 1 over, it becomes negative 1, and I still have my plus or minus square root of x minus 6. This, again, is two equations, actually. In y1, you would put negative 1 plus the square root of x minus 6. And in y2, you would put negative 1 minus the square root of x minus 6. The plus and the minus are representing two different things. Important to note. This second part that we're going to do is actually going to be about solving, meaning finding the answer or the x values that work. So, some examples. x squared equals 49. What number squared gives you a 49? 7, seven is one correct answer. Negative and negative 7 is the other. The way that you would know that, if you weren't sure, is you would square root both sides. And, oh, look, I square rooted... An x thing. So that means that my x could be positive or negative 7. Those are two different answers. The next example, example 6, is exactly the same. The only difference is there's a number first that we have to take care of. So we move the x to the other side, or sorry, the 6 to the other side, and that gives us x squared equals 25. If we subtract 6 from both sides, and then we square root afterwards. So I square root both sides now. And just like the previous example, when I take the square root of some kind of x thing, on the opposite side, I have to go with a plus or minus, and it's a 5. And what that's saying is that either 5 or negative 5, if I plugged it in, would work. In example number 7,